Hey everybody, this is Brett from Hoosier Carnivore, and we are live in the meat locker today with none other than Carrie Mann. It's cold in here, Brett. What's going on? Welcome, Carrie. How's it going, buddy? It's going wonderful. I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. It's a little chilly, but uh, carnivores don't get cold, so I'm not going to complain. That's right. We got some of that to talk about today. Right. <laughs> uh, carnivores don't. So we got uh, some cool stuff lined up. Want to give uh, some more people a chance to jump in. Um, we'll uh, post up. Oh, hold on. So Ribeye Ranger, welcome. Hey. Let's go. All right. Lynn Tucker, thank you for coming. Hey, Lynn. Karen, as always, she's here all the time. Karen's we love awesome. Karen. Yeah. Darth Carnivore, that's Charlie. He uh, He's a local here in Indy. Oh, I nice. I met him at a, a meetup over on the west side of town a couple months ago. Really cool guy. He was the first guy to order a Hoosier Carnivore t-shirt. Nice. <laughs> I love the name, too. Yeah, and he changed his avatar. Um his avatar was uh, Darth Vader carving a turkey with his lightsaber. <laughs> so he came up with a new one. That's cool. Carrie from My Metamorphosis. Thank you for coming, sweetie. Hey, Carrie. Nurse Kim. Kim. A lot of, a lot of familiar names. The chat is rolling already. We yeah. got 83 people. That's nice. amazing. Thank you, everybody, for coming in. This is, uh, this is tremendous. Thank you very much. Uh, if everybody in the chat wants to put down, maybe uh, we'll do a little roll call. Uh, how long you've been carnivore and where you're from? Like to see that. Yeah. We got Paul from Temple, Texas. Lisa C. She's uh, helping me put together our local meetup in oh. April. April 27th. I'll just go ahead and give a plug for it now. April 27th at 11 a.m. Uh, here in Indianapolis, uh, we're having a carnivore keto get together. Uh, anybody who wants to come is welcome. All you have to do is email me at who's your carnivore at Gmail and just let me know you're coming. Um, and if you search through my community page, I put a thumbnail of the restaurant and the place and time and, and all that stuff. And I'll be sending out more things, but just wanted to throw that out there real quick. And Carrie, you guys are having a meetup coming up soon, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, April 13th at in Thienesville, Wisconsin, near my buddy JT's place. We're having one in a park. Um, I will put a link to that one in the description below. I also have a link to Brett's channel. So if anyone's watching from my channel, go subscribe to Brett's channel. We're trying to get him to a thousand subscribers. It'd be awesome if we could do that tonight. Um, yeah, it would be. I'm at about 830. So oh, let's go. You know, it's kind of been growing organically and, uh, you know, uh, I've been pretty happy. I've only had it since August. So about, what, seven months, seven, eight months. Right. So not too bad for a new YouTube channel. Yeah. So. I just I just added that link in my description because I forgot to have it. But, yeah, JT and I are having one at a park. Uh Brett is awesome. He came out to our Chicago meetup and he came out to our Montello theater meetup. And I don't know about you, Brett, but after the Montello one, like it was, there was so much going on because we had Dr. Hampton on the screen and so many people coming in. But when I was done, I was like, I want more of just hanging out yes. with other carnivores. It was so yes. much fun hanging out with other carnivores. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. And that's when uh, Lisa C not like right after I got back, she was asking me, if uh, I'd ever considered having a meetup and I'm like, sure, you know, twist my arm. So she's helping me organize it. And so, you know, uh, she gets uh, some of the credit for uh, organizing this first, uh, this first one. And I guess she's reaching out to some people to see if we can get some stuff for uh, giveaways and things like that, door prizes and stuff. And Carrie, I want to thank you. He sent, uh, he sent us a bunch of, uh, healing humanity bracelets and some salt shakers to uh, give out to the people at the at the give at the at the meetup. So thank you very much for sending that. It was very generous. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's the least I could do. I, I appreciate you getting the word out and 
traveling out and coming out to the meetups. It's been a lot of fun. So, yeah, um, I wish I could make it to your meetup, but my wife's birthday and my son's birthday are that weekend. Yeah, no, I totally, and, uh, totally understand. Got other, got uh, family obligations. So, but I'll, uh, I'll definitely catch the next one and I hope you guys have good weather for it. Yes. And I was going to say there will be many more next ones because we're planning on doing more. Uh, don't have any on paper as of yet, but we're probably going to be announcing another one very soon. We're going to try to scatter them around sort of the countries we're filming uh, individuals. So I think yeah. uh, the following month after this one, we might be having another one. So more to come on that one. Well, speaking of getting the message out, if um, any of you have been under a rock for the last year, uh, Kerry has, you know, really grown his channel and he's, he's just changing lives. Um, I know we like to give Dr. Barry a lot of credit for it, which he deserves, but Kerry, you deserve some credit, um, for the, uh, impact that you're having in the carnivore community. Um, I don't know if people tell you that enough, um, but you are having a, a big impact out there. And on his channel, if you go to his community tab, He's been posting some like little thank you comments uh, that people have been posting in his videos. And I just wanted to read the first one here. Almost three months into carnivore, down over 50 pounds. I'm so excited because I've been trying to lose weight for nearly 20 years and I failed so many times. I had pretty much given up on it. Uh, now I'm losing weight with almost zero effort. Mm. Uh, that was one of the letters posted. And, you know, carnivore is kind of zero effort, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's like the only thing I've ever done where I didn't have to exercise if I didn't want to. And I'm just I'm just getting healthier by default. Right. Um, hey, Brett, I just want to make sure Ribeye Ranger was just saying he doesn't think it's playing on your channel right now. You might need to click play or something, he said. Oh. Okay, let me um, go to my channel and just check that out. While Brett's doing that, thank you for saying that, Brett. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I I try to post, so I've been posting those comments on Instagram. Yeah, too. it is. It's on on my channel. Oh, it's good. Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Um, it's on. There's 15 people watching over there, and I can see some links on some of these comments, like from Vicky, it's got a chain link on it. Uh, so I know they're watching from my, from my channel. Awesome. Okay, cool. And Limitless Lindy's in here. Hey, Lindy. She's awesome. Yeah. And Lynn Tucker and hello from Oshkosh. There's a local. Yeah. Not too far. And Susan Hampton. She is always here for it. Dan, just uh, a bunch. The chat's, uh, the chat's really going. So awesome. wow, I got a, we got 144 in here. So nice. that's really awesome. All right. Another letter uh, from Hawk force. Carrie, I got on carnivore because of you. I've been on this way of eating since January. I'm no longer diabetic. I've mm. lost almost 60 pounds. And never felt better. Thank you, brother. You saved my life. Wow. That's a Dr. Barry comment that you yeah. just Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Those ones get me choked up. I, I really appreciate those comments. You know, I, I've been posting more and more of them. Some of them are like, thank you, Carrie, which I really appreciate. But a lot of them I'm trying to post because it's just people, the scale of people changing their lives forever. And so I'm trying to post those just to show other people, like, this isn't just crazy Brett and crazy Carrie that have changed their lives forever for carnivore. I am yeah. getting so many comments from individuals uh, changing their lives forever. So uh, that's one of the struggles with the documentary, too, as I worry about it. Are people going to be like, oh, Bill Nutt, uh, Jeff DeProsperis, Maggie, those guys are just anecdotal. And to try to show, like, the scale of this thing, because... It is really, I believe it's spreading like wildfire now. I am seeing, hearing more and more comments from people locally and online uh, that are doing this and just changing their lives forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's. I think we're really having an impact and it's just getting bigger. 
and the community's growing. There's more YouTube channels. Um, and the, uh, there seems like to be more people showing up to chats. Yeah. Um, and more new people all the time. So it's really, really awesome to see. All right. Got one more. Um, let's see. Four months of carnivore diet, lost 75 pounds in the first four months and 100 pounds total in the first year. My waist went from 54 to 34. Wow. 54 inch waist to 34 inch waist. I've de aged too. I'm 50, but people don't believe it. The carnivore diet had dramatically changed my life for the better, and in fact, has likely saved my life. Wow. That's. I, it, it starts yeah. to. I get speechless on some of these, Brett, because um, I hear so many of them, people changing their lives forever, that. It, it almost starts to become a new normal where it's like that person just said they lost a hundred pounds and yeah. all, all of that waist size. But imagine that, like that's absolutely incredible. But for us carnivores, it's almost becoming normal. Like, Oh, well, people do that all the time. on oh, carnivores. Yeah, like, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> crazy. It's just crazy. It's like, yeah, the hundred pound club is getting bigger and bigger and bigger all right? the time. I keep using it. I don't know. I just visually, I like the bowling ball, ball analogy. So they lost 10 bowling balls. I got to do a video where I get some 10 pound bowling balls and just try to carry around 10 of them. At go to point. a bowling alley and just start, right? have, have your daughters just get your arms and just start loading bowling balls in your arms. Right. Oh man. Okay. One month, one more coming up on five months and I've lost 20 kilograms, which is over 60 pounds. And it's the best year I've ever felt. I've had arthritis, reflux, high blood pressure for 30 years, and it's all under control. I turned 50 in January, and carnivore has completely changed my life. Mm. That's 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 a prevalent one is completely changed my life or changed my life forever. That um, You just <laughs> never get tired of hearing that. No, absolutely not. Never get tired of that. All right. Well, we got a lot of people in here. Three months carnivore. Lynn Tucker coming up on her 267 days, July 5th for one year. Shout out Lynn Tucker carnivore. I'm a big fan. Great YouTube yep. channel. She's she's awesome. Carrie, 14 months for her. Yay, Carrie. I got to, I got to meet her about uh, five weeks ago. I met her and uh, John Backwoods carnivore. Uh, oh. We went down to Nashville for a little, little couple getaway, and then we met them for lunch, uh, for a little little get together. Nice. It was uh, it was great. She's exactly the person in person that she is on the chats and uh, in her videos. And She's John awesome. is too, and so are you. Um, oh. You know, a lot of people get accused of being fake or, you know, putting on a happy face or a funny face or whatever it is for their channel just to try to get views. And I've yet to meet anyone that hasn't been completely a hundred percent genuine. Yeah. On that point, my, my biggest worry, honestly, was um, I was a little nervous. Carnivores don't get nervous, but meeting Dr. Barry, because they always say like, you don't want to meet your heroes. They're not going to turn mm -hmm. out, but 100% honest. He exceeded every expectation uh, for sure. It just, just amazing. Yeah, I'll get to meet him um, in October at Keto Palooza in Louisville. I believe oh, he's coming to that. Awesome. Yep. And if any of you guys have uh, have questions, post those in the comments with the QQQ. That will be awesome. Now we'll get on to our. Uh, our, our next thing, carnivores don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I figure we do a little fire back and forth. That's one of uh, kind of my favorite topics or my favorite things uh, about carnivores, you know, taking notice of all the things that it does for us. And sometimes it's things that you don't even really realize until somebody mentions it. And it's like, oh, yeah, I don't have that problem anymore. So, well, well, I'll start with the obvious. Carnivores don't sunburn. Yeah, there you go. And the and the I heard Dr. Chafee probably give the best explanation for that, 
He says, every 90 days, we get new skin. Our skin sheds and regrows. And we basically have a whole new skin about every 90 days. So if you're eating the right things and the building blocks of, that your skin is built from are built from the right materials, you'll be, your skin will be naturally better at handling the elements and handling all these different things that, that were designed as humans to deal with. Right. Um, I, people get so fired up by the carnivores don't sunburn. I don't know. A lot of people might not know this because I haven't really promoted it that much. But a lot of the interviews I do, we have them as a podcast, which is I guess it's on Apple and Android. And I had to name the podcast. So the podcast name is Carnivores Don't Sunburn. So if anyone wants to listen in their car instead of watching the YouTube videos. But my goodness, people get so fired up on that. It's like 50-50 yeah. where I'm like, I'm a carnivore and I do get sunburn and I don't. And they get so mad. I get so many where they say, that's so stupid. You're going to, the sun, right. the rays are going to burn and you're not going to burn. How is that possible? And I'm like, well, no, think about it. Like you said with Dr. Chafee example, how many people go on carnivore or lion diet for skin issues, autoimmune disorders, rosacea, right. psoriasis, and it clears up so quickly. Why is it so out of the realm that um, maybe you're less susceptible to getting burned while on carnivore? If you have all these other skin improvement, maybe it's the lack of seed oils. Maybe it's just the, maybe when your skin isn't in a constant state of inflammation, yeah. you're less likely to get sunburned. It, yeah, it actually and makes it, a lot of sense. And it's and it's built from junk material, right? Yeah, toxins and all sorts of stuff that shouldn't be in there. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, it's when you really go down the rabbit hole. I could talk about carnivores and sunburn all day, but the the whole thing it was like. Um, what use? Because I had I got skin cancer on my ear about ten years ago, and I had to have surgery to have it removed. Mm -hmm. And I believe now that it was from chronic inflammation. Which during the documentary, I'm so blessed I got to learn a lot from Professor Thomas Seafried. Most cancers are from chronic inflammation. I think that's what it was because my whole life I was under the impression I'm going to get skin cancer. So I was always lathering on the suntan lotion. When I was a kid, my mom did it, and when I was yeah. an adult, my wife did it, and I still got the skin cancer. Um, my, my question was what happened before the invention of suntan lotion was skin cancer just rampant throughout the world right. and people were just dropping like flies from it. It's right. Just, there's so many yeah. things like that with carnivore where you start to just, well, let's just think back a little bit. What would, what would humanity have done before this? And it's just so much stuff that just doesn't make sense when you really dig into it. So yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so I'll, I'll give one carnivores don't, um, man, I got a whole bunch, but <laughs> One of them that I, I think is amazing is carnivores don't snore, which is another one that might make some people mad because I know some people still do snore. But I have yep. I stopped snoring almost immediately when doing carnivore diet. Dr. Jordan Peterson mentioned the first week on carnivore, he stopped snoring. And out of all the comments I get on the YouTube videos, I get that one a ton from people that they stopped snoring. And yep. I never realized you could snore from inflammation. And I think that's all it was for me was my, my tongue, my airway, it was just inflamed and I was snoring. That inflammation goes away quick on carnivore and you stop snoring pretty quick uh, for some people, not everyone. I, I realize some people still do snore, but my wife says that I still, I still snore a little bit. Um, yeah. I don't think it's enough to really wake her up. It might just be loud breathing. Maybe she's just annoyed because I'm breathing. Right. <laughs> I'm breathing too loud or something, but, uh, uh, my next one is uh, I don't sweat like I used to. Ooh. I used to just, I get out of the shower and I would have to cool off for 10 minutes before I would, I would get out of the shower, dry off, and then I would start sweating. And now that, that doesn't happen to me anymore. And today I went for my walk and we did uh, about two and a half miles. Uh, and I didn't, I mean, it's cool outside, but I didn't break a sweat at all. I wasn't breaking a sweat like on my back or anything under my clothes or nothing. So I don't, uh, yeah. And, and anybody who's been overweight knows it doesn't take much to get us to sweat. Right. Yep. Uh, another one I have is, um, carnivores don't get sick for yep. the most part. It's been a, it's I'm over. I recently hit a year on carnivore, and man, I I recently started going through my medical records, try to get everything document. I have everything documented, but it's, there's so many records all over the place. But when I started looking, I'm like, 
I was going into the doctor nearly every single month at least, get new prescriptions. I'm sick with this. I got bronchitis. I got some cold. Yeah. I got some flu. I haven't been to the doctor in a year. Haven't had any sickness or ailments or issues. And luckily now, most of my family is carnivore, which is just amazing. Um, but many months ago, they weren't. And like the girls would come home with something sick from school and they're all sick. I'm just yeah. walking right through the sickness and I have nothing. So it's. Yeah. It's like every year, everybody here gets uh, flu shots and they still get the flu. And uh, I don't, I haven't got the flu in years. And uh, matter of fact, uh, we just had two people in the house have, have uh, uh, the C word. Uh, and uh, I didn't get it. I had right. tested negative. So, but yeah, I mean, our immune system, you know, when we feed ourselves right, I think it does a lot for our immune system. And if you tend to fast every now and then, once you fast past like, 24 or 36 hours, your immune system will do a complete reset and renew. So, yes. um, yeah, it's really good uh, for the uh, for the immune system. It's good peace hey. of mind, too. Not worrying about getting sick. But I, yeah. I also like to think about the toll my body was going through processing all of that junk before. So yeah. much waste in, waste out. That requires an incredible amount of energy. And that's an incredible amount of energy less that your immune system has to operate. So... Um, mm -hmm. like permanent uh, sickness or immediate sickness. I don't, I don't have any, but it's also kind of a good peace of mind to worrying about the future and aging and things like that. I'm not really worried about those things. Here's one I know that'll set people off. I don't smell <laughs> much and I don't have to shower as much. So if I'm busy and I just skip and don't take a shower one night, it's not the end of the world. I don't smell. I mean, I could take a whiff in my armpit right now, and it doesn't smell. I mean, I, I mean, I don't smell. <laughs> That's just incredible. And I think it's from, you know, if you eat a bad diet and eat a lot of sugar and carbs, that feeds bacteria. And it, you know, bacteria on your skin, that's what causes odor is bacteria. And if you're not feeding them, they won't grow. And if right. they don't grow, they don't cause a smell. That's my theory anyway. Yeah, I think you're right. Ribeye Ranger, Ranger said, I just whiffed my pits too. You're right. I don't smell. I've noticed the same thing. I've noticed the same thing too. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another one I have is, um, oh, let me think. I got so many. Uh, carnivores. Uh, carnivores don't complain. Carnivores seem so grateful. Uh, yes. I, there's something, I don't know what it is, but there's something about every carnivore I've ever met. They're just awesome. It's like, we could be best friends. I've got like a thousand best friends. Now. Every carnivore I met, I'm like, this person is just great. It's incredible. I, I think part of it's the mindset because yeah. before when I was on the standard American diet, I was in that brain fog. And I was barely able to get by or get through the day. Now I've got excess energy and you have energy to be a nicer human and, and reach out to people and make connections. So, And you, you want to spread the word. It's like um, the things that go away with carnivore, one of them is pessimism. Yeah. 100%. We, become, we become optimists. Yep. We're Gratitude. And optimist. That'd be a good t-shirt. Meat fueled optimist. Right. <laughs> I have to write that down. <laughs> I don't uh I don't get tired in the middle of the day. Carnivores don't get tired. Yes. Um before I would eat and then two o'clock I could be driving down the road and I'm just like, I gotta stop. I gotta I gotta wake myself up. I get in the getting the two o'clock drowsies in the middle of the day. Right. Or just like right after you eat, I would get, you know, everybody gets a little drowsy. Doesn't happen anymore. Yes. Completely gone. This is kind of along the same lines, but I think it's worth mentioning because this was a game changer for me is carnivores don't get brain fog. Yeah. Uh, and I had brain fog before. I've mentioned this many times. I didn't realize the extent of it. And that's one of the reasons I'm really fired up about the documentary too is because I really, truly feel like most of humanity on the standard American diet, they're almost walking around in an impairment, like they're intoxicated or drunk because they have that brain fog, because they got inflammation and they're putting sugar and the brain's inflamed, the body's inflamed. And when you're like that, 
man, it's just, I think it's, I think it's worse. You just say brain fog. You're like, oh yeah, I got a little bit of brain fog. But when the entirety of humanity is walking around in an intoxicated sort of brain fog, you're just barely getting by and you're going along to get along and you're doing the bare minimum and it's no way to live. So I, I've heard that from so many people too, that said, I knew I had brain fog before, but I didn't realize the extent until I got out of it. So I think that's a big one. Mm -hmm. Todd Bachness, uh, Carnivore Cure. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, he, I know he's watching on my channel, but he must be donating on your channel. Oh, thank you so much, Todd. He's always so generous. Who's up for a ribeye eating contest in Austin? I'm up for it. I don't know if I could beat you. Bet against me if you hate money. Laugh out loud. <laughs> I'm willing to. I'm willing to compete, though. Who knows if I'll win or not? But I'll compete at a, a ribeye eating contest any day. Absolutely. Although I, I know Todd when he's uh, when he's priming, uh, he can put the meat away. He can put the beef away. Yeah, for sure. Uh, looks like we had another gift here if i can find it i don't know if i can see it on my chat but it looks like gone mad gifted 10 homestead how memberships wow thank you so much so generous i think you did that the other day too yeah that is amazing so i'm learning how all that works but i guess if if you guys if you're members and you're not subscribed to homestead how or i'm sorry if you're subscribed but you're not a member uh, 10 right. of you will just randomly get in your inbox that you're now, you got a free month of membership from Gone Mad. So thank you yeah. so much for that. I really appreciate it. Uh, every penny from that goes to the documentary. And we do a members only live stream every Thursday uh, at 3 p.m. Central. And we do members only videos and members only emails and all sorts of community stuff. So thank you so much. Appreciate the that gift, Gone Mad. Very generous of you. Love, I have our Australian friends in here. Carnivore for three weeks. Learned a lot from Dr. Barry, five minutes a day. Bella, Dr. Brighton Moore. You are on the right track. Yeah. That you are you are in the you are in the mainstream of carnivore right there. Yep. So you'll learn so much from all these people. And the best thing about the carnivore community, other than the awesome people that are in it, all the information is free. Yeah. There's no there's no club to join. I mean, if you want to be a member of a channel, you know, and, and show your support for that channel, it's fine, but it's not not mandatory. You don't have to buy into some secret program to find out what their secret, you know, design or plan is for your weight loss scheme. You know, there's no scheme. I, I, that's what I loved about Carnivore too when I started because I was ultimately convinced by watching a bunch of Dr. Barry videos and I kept asking myself that what is this dude selling like what is where's the where's the supplements where's the pills like where's the diet program I got to pay three hundred dollars for or something like that and I'm like it's just a, f videos and videos full of free useful information that could change my life forever it's crazy mm -hmm. all right um Carnivores don't have gum disease. Yeah. Yeah, my gum disease. I had my my uh, uh, teeth checked about six months ago. Or no, about three months ago. I was fasting at the time. And uh, she remarked on how, how great my, my gums looked. And uh, my, you know, I'd always kind of struggled with having gingivitis uh, for years and years. And it's gone. You know, wow. it's all inflammation. inflammation. Yeah. I learned that a couple months into carnivore, I had the same experience. I went into the dentist and the, interestingly, the dental hygienist was, um, she was carnivore. She, I'm like, what? We started talking, but she, she said the same thing. She's, and she taught me this. I didn't know this, but she's like, when a human body's inflamed, it shows up in the mouth. If there's inflammation in the gums and the mouth, there's inflammation throughout the body. She's like, your gums, you have like no inflammation. What are you doing? I think yeah. she said something like, are you doing keto or whatever? I'm like, uh, I was kind of hesitant because I was just starting. I'm like, I'm doing carnivore. She said, oh, really? And she, was, she had already done carnivore. Her husband was carnivore keto as well. So, uh, Gotta love that. Yeah. All right. I got another one here. Okay. Uh, this one is a little bit less uh, firing people up, but carnivores don't use plates. We use cutting boards. We use cutting boards. That's absolutely right. That's why I brought my cutting board to Montello. Right. We went back to your place, grilled some steaks, and ate it right there on my cutting board. Yep. 
So, yeah, it is so, my prized possession. Yeah. Everyone's always like, you're copying Dr. Baker. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> he's pretty awesome. Hey. Hey, I copy his salt, too. Every, he's doing it right. Like You're copying him. I'm copying him. Uh, Sophia eats steak. She eats all her meat on a cutting board. Right. Uh, a lot of people do. It was the so. funniest thing. I, I don't know if I told this before, but um, Jen came in. My wife, Jen, came in once to the, our kitchen living room. is right next to each other. And Dr. Baker was on YouTube. I just always have YouTube content going. But I was eating my steak on a cutting board. Dr. Baker was eating his steak on a cutting board. And Jen was like, oh, look, he's copying you. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, it's the other, it's the other, the way, other around. way around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, carnivores don't need medication. Oh. That one will that one will spark something right. unless you have an actual disease or an actual, you know, something that you need a medication for. But you know, like if you have type two diabetes and you go carnivore, odds are you're going to get off of all of your medication. If you yeah. have high blood pressure, odds are you're going to get off of all your medication. It just takes it just takes time, you know, and let your body heal and. We can, I'm 54 years old and I'm not on any medication at all. I don't even take supplements. I just eat meat and salt and lots of eggs and eat clean and eat lots of fat and butter. And it just happens. It just, I just feel great. You know, you're just, you're just behaving like a natural, proper human and it all works out as it as should be. Same just, thing with me. I was on 15, 20 pills. I keep showing my pill thing. I'm on no pills. And even like doing carnivore, I started out as doing more electrolytes and I'd supplement some vitamins and stuff. It's been months. It's just beef, salt, and water. Yeah. Butter, bacon, eggs, salt, and water. I did the yeah. lion diet thing when Brett was here. I was on lion diet. I did it for like 16 days and now I'm back to uh, bacon and eggs and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> the I, I bacon pulled you back in. It pulled me back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that thick cut stuff. Oh, it's hard. It's hard. It's um, good. But yeah, no, no medications at all for me either. Um, all right, let's see. What is another one I got here? Carnivores don't. Uh, carnivores don't need a cookbook. Just a. We just need a meat thermometer. So much easier. Yes. Cooking. Yeah. Uh, I'm. Matter of fact, I just made a steak tonight. Used my ten minute method, and the uh, steak came out perfect. Salted it and. Uh, that was it. There wasn't, there was no magic. Right. You know, fire, meat, salt, time. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. It's, it's one of the added benefits of carnivore I never would have anticipated, but uh, just how liberating and freeing it is when you're cooking a meal. It's just like, that's it. Like before, it was all of these ingredients and spices and sides and sauces right. and recipes. And oh, we forgot this. Run to the store. It's like, nope, just fire up a steak and I eat and I'm. Not eating really for entertainment anymore. It's just uh, you don't have to be a you don't have to be a chef. I mean, even if you're just starting off, you just bought your first place and you're learning how to boil water. I mean, you could be you could cook a carnivore meal. Yep. You, know, you can fry an egg. You know, you can fry a piece of bacon. Uh, you can you can throw something in an air fryer and hit a button, and you're done. Yep. Uh, probably one last one here. Carnivores don't get mad. Ooh. We don't get irritated. We don't get easily agitated. Uh, I notice with my with uh, with my journey, I much less irritable than I used to be. You know, if the kids were messing around or making noise while I was trying to do something, you know, and I'd pipe up and yell at them or something and you know it doesn't happen like it used to anymore i mean you sure you know kids can still get under your skin but um much much longer fuse now yeah that's so true no road rage no it's like uh yeah no the temper's gone it's that i don't know it's that carnivore zen you just get into that it's interesting yep absolutely you got any more or we want to move on to the next thing um, I think that was it. Although Lynn Tucker Carnivore had a good one. Carnivores don't have toasters. There you go. We don't, we can use a toaster oven. Right. Maybe to reheat something or whatever, but yeah. 
Well, I got a question from the chat from Ribeye Ranger. How did I come to carnivore? Well, like uh, my, so my story is similar to Carrie's. I did keto for a long time, up and down, up and down, on and off. And then I had lost, at one time, I had lost a bunch of weight on doing keto about six or seven years ago. And then I was in like a car accident and um, I just kind of, my I just didn't stick with it as good as I should have. And that's also about the time all the new keto treats and bread and cookies and the cook keto cereals and things were coming out. And I bought all that stuff. And it was just the stair step back to the real thing. And then, you know, slowly over a few years, I started gaining my weight back. And then I spent probably two years just kind of lying to myself that I could control what I eat. I could control my cravings. I could just be smarter about what I ate and not gain weight. And it was just nothing but a big lie mm. um, because I couldn't control my appetite. And I did, you know, eat, you know, bags of Doritos and barbecue chips and fries and, you know, going to McDonald's and getting food. Like I'd bring home some cheeseburgers or something for the kids and I'd order a fry and eat it in the car on the way home and then ditch the, the wrapper so nobody would see, you know, that kind of went on like that for, for a couple of years. And then it came around last year on St. Patrick's Day. I'd been thinking about it leading up to that. And I'm like, you know, it's St. Patrick's Day. Uh, today's the day. I'm going to do this. Um, I'm going to do, I knew what carnivore was because I'd seen Dr. Barry. I'd seen uh, Kelly Hogan's videos, uh, Dr. Berg's videos and all that. I kind of knew what to do. I just didn't really have the courage to just do it and announce it to everyone that, hey, this is this is what I'm doing now. You know, please try to be supportive. Right. Um, and uh, and it's it's been great. The last year has just been life changing. Mm. So. Yep, that's uh, kind of my my brief carnivore journey there. That's very similar to mine too. Isn't it like the most disappointing thing in the world? Like you mentioned six, seven years ago, you lost all that weight. I Similar, I did the same thing on keto. I remember Jen and I had a, our picture taken. And I remember when the picture was, I'm like, never gaining this weight again. No matter what right. I do, it was so hard to lose all this weight, fasting and doing keto and the keto snacks. And then sure enough, a couple months later, gained it all back and then some. Um, Whenever I was doing those diets prior, they always felt forced and unnatural and like I was ca counting calories or starving myself. Or I, it always felt like it was something unsustainable. And that's the biggest difference for me on carnivores. This this feels completely natural. I don't even have to think about it. So, Oh, um, we got another super chat uh, from Todd Bachness again. <laughs> carnivores don't get the limp noodle either funny but also true he's got a point he's got a point there <laughs> there is a male health benefit yes um i guess yeah. on that on that topic i guess keeping it clean though i haven't had like my testosterone tested but the male side of things i feel like a man like i feel much more than ever before like yeah. um I don't even know what it is. Like before I was always, I don't, not to say that if you have anxiety, you're not a man, but I was always, I was always fearful and worrying and anxious. And now I'm just like, oh, it'll be fine. Like whatever, like it should be. It's definitely a difference that way too. My friends all get the Texas cedar fever allergies, but not me, not ribeye ranger or Len Tucker. Yeah. I've never had allergies. So. I can't say that carnivore cured my allergies because I've never had allergies. If you have had allergies, I wonder if, uh, you know, if carnivores contributed to maybe just the lessening of the symptoms and the, your sensitivity to it. There's the whiff the pits video. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I still don't get how you cannot shower. Well, Primal Mike, you're probably working out and sweating a lot more than maybe I am sometimes. But I can easily skip and it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, I don't feel any worse for wear or smell or anything. All right, so um, I thought maybe we could each just spend a couple minutes talking about our one year uh, as a carnivore, just kind of a, a recap, and then maybe what your your goals are, or what your vision is for the next year. Yeah, yeah. So I guess for me, uh, the one year recap. Wow, it's I can't believe what's happened in a year. I know I attribute everything to carnivore, but. It really is. I just have more energy and more motivation. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, you're so inspirational on carnivore. But I really think that's due in large part because I was very depressed and in a dark place for a very long time before. It's hard not to be sort of excited and motivated uh, after the fact. Uh, what I'm most happy about over the course of the last year is just reconnecting with my girls and my family and being present and in the moment as opposed to before when I was in a brain fog and just thinking about the future and uh, time was seemed like it was going by so much faster before because I was just in that brain fog. Uh, in terms of take a shower every three weeks, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, in terms of uh, what's happened like with the documentary and stuff, is it's just <laughs> blowing my mind in terms of all of the doctors and experts that we got to talk to and the individual stories, it's its becoming normal on one hand, but it's hard to believe on the other hand, just seeing so many people healing and changing their lives forever. In terms of this next year and going forward, what I'm most excited about is 100% the, the documentary and bringing things together. We're in the process right now of putting together a prototype because I keep mentioning like we filmed Dr. Barry, we filmed Jeff, we filmed uh, Bill, but no one's seen Right. other than a few little clips on YouTube, but we're going to be sharing a huge part of that very soon as part of our prototype, which is going to be a, a 10, 15 minute version of what we have so far. I can't wait to share that with people because it's, I can't wait I, to see it. Yeah. It's just those stories want to be told so bad from those individuals. And my goodness, everyone loves Bill so much and Jeff and, and Maggie, uh, but I'm like, you guys haven't even, you guys haven't even seen a fraction, a fraction of that yet. So that's what I'm really yeah. excited for, for the next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to see it. And I know how hard you've been, uh, you and Adam have been working on it and all the footage that you're sitting on. Um, it's, it's got to be eating you up inside wanting to share it. Yeah. So, um, the, the thing you're making, that's, is that the torch? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Just for anyone, it's kind of an interesting story. I'll make it quick, but it's called a torch. Uh, we're submitting this to angel studios. Our, our initial goal with the documentary was let's just get it on a streaming service like Netflix or HBO or one of these, because we want to reach as many people as possible. Yeah. Now our aspirations are higher. We want to get on the big screen first and then maybe later we'll also stream it. And angel studios has this thing and they call it a torch, which is like a prototype. And it's kind of interesting because um, a lot of people might not know this. I learned this from them, but the Statue of Liberty, uh, when the gentleman that wanted to make the Statue of Liberty, he couldn't afford to make the whole thing. So he just made the torch and that was the prototype. And then he showed that to the public. And it was, it's kind of interesting. It was actually one of the yeah. first forms of crowdfunding. Everyone saw this beautiful torch that he put together, huge torch. And they're like, we want to see that whole statue. So everyone chipped in a dollar here, a dollar there. And that's how the whole Statue of Liberty got made. It's a yeah. similar thing with Angel Studios is, you give them the prototype. This is what we have so far for a documentary. See if people are interested. And then you can get the remaining funding, hopefully, to finish. Because, of course, uh, like having a documentary is expensive. Getting a documentary on Netflix with Netflix-approved cameras is even more expensive. And getting a documentary that is to the quality needed to get it on the big screen is even more expensive. Uh, yeah. But Angel Studios has sort of a program in place for that through this whole Torch system. So that's what we're working on, the Torch prototype. 10, 15 minute version, um, which will be ready to share with people here in the coming weeks. I can't wait to do that for sure. Ooh, nice. Coming weeks. Yep. Can't wait. And then, um, do you know what the process is for showing it? And I know they have a, there's a system where you, you go in and vote on it. 
Yeah, yeah, great question. So Angel Studios, if we submit the when we submit the torch to them, it goes on their app, and they have yeah. Angel Studios is a really popular following and app. And in the app, I'm a member on their app right now. They have this thing; it's called the Guild. It's like a little icon in the app, and you can go in there and you can watch torches from other shows, animations, full movies, everything. And then when you watch it, just the short version, you can vote on it. And if it gets enough votes, it moves on to the next level. So we're definitely going to be reaching out to the community to say, hey, if you guys, if you like what we've done with this torch, hopefully you do, check it out on Angel Studios and give us a little upvote. If it gets enough votes, it moves on to sort of the next phase where it can get the remaining funding and sort of partnership with Angel Studios. Yeah. Well, I'm sure with with the carnivore community and I'm sure Dr. Barry, he's probably going to be promoting and sharing that too because he you know all these doctors who agreed to be part of the documentary hopefully they'll agree to also promote it yeah um, i'm sure they will i mean i don't think we'll have to twist their twist their arm very hard yeah um, we're so thankful for all of them definitely and like dr barry we got permission to use the power of a proper human diet because that's kind mm -hmm. of the, to make the proper human diet so he's definitely a big part of it as well as uh, Dr. Hampton and yeah, all of these uh, individuals. It's uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. I can't, uh, can't wait to see that. Um, so we talked about our, our recap. Um, I guess, you know, my, my one year recap, um, you know, I've lost about 60 pounds or so. Um, and my focus for the next year is going to just try to keep doing what I'm doing and uh, keep trying to, to lose weight. I'm going to um, start the lion diet. Uh, next week is spring break. Uh, so me and my wife and two kids, we're going down to Florida. We're going to Pensacola for a week. And then April 6th, that Saturday, we're heading home. And we just so happen to be passing Atmore, Alabama. And you know who lives in Outmore, Alabama? Carnivore Kip. Yeah. And Carnivore Kip is having a cookout. Uh, he's having a huge get together. He's bringing his big Shirley smoker out to this nature preserve. And he's going to make briskets. He's going to make sausages. He's going to make pulled pork. He's going to make all kinds of stuff. And it's all free, although. I'm sure he's going to be accepting donations and I plan to give him a, a nice donation uh, for all the meat and effort and everything. But um, I'm going to get to meet uh, the Browns, uh, hanging with the Browns. They're going to be there. Oh man. I want, and to, go. I want to meet them. And uh, carnivore Scott is going to be there too. Wow. So plus who knows? That's just the ones that I know about. So right. who knows uh, who else is going to be coming to that? So, uh, really look forward to meeting Kip and uh, trying his uh, barbecue. And uh, is this going to be? It's going to be epic. So that's it's only, and that's in no small reason why I picked Pensacola, Florida. Right? <laughs> coincidence? No, <laughs> I think not. Is, yeah, coincidence? I think not. Uh, plus, there's a lot to do in uh, Pensacola, so it's a good, cool place to go. Man, I wish we were filming or doing something down there around that time. I would love to go to that. Uh... The Browns are awesome. Kip is awesome. I I did like early on in my carnivore journey talking about the first year I did a cook-off video with Kip, which was, of course, it was no contest. I knew going into it, it wasn't going to be a contest, but I like, this will just be fun doing a cooking video with Kip. So we both did a little smoke yeah. off. That was a lot of fun. Kip is awesome. That's yeah. going to be, that, you, are you going to have some videos on your YouTube channel from the whole encounter? Oh yeah. I'll, I'll make a video. I, I might even go live while I'm there. Nice. Just to do just a, one of those new uh, vertical lives that YouTube's promoting. Nice. So I may do that uh, while I'm down there and I'll definitely take lots of pictures and, and share that out. So that's exciting. Hey, one more reminder for everyone watching from my channel, subscribe to who's your carnivore. We're trying to get him to a thousand subscribers. He's getting close. Yeah. Get, get you there by the time you get to Kit, but that's going to be fun watching that. Yeah. I'll have to, I'll just go check my channel real quick and see if I've picked up any. I don't know if I have or not, but we'll see here in a segundo. Yeah, 848. So picked up a few. So 
thank you very much to everybody who who has subscribed. So about 150 more to go. Yeah, let's go. Hey, Arlene, thank you for that. Um, beautiful carnivores and ketivores. Uh, yeah, Arlene, she she comments on all my videos and she's in all of our live streams on my channel and your channel. Um, she, she's, a, she's a great friend of the community. So many good friends. Hey, I just want to shout out one more good friend, uh, Lori Carnivore Cheer. She's incredible. She's got an awesome YouTube channel. She's just the sweetest, nicest person ever. If you guys aren't watching Lori, you're missing out. But I wanted to mention this. I think I did yesterday, but she donated. She can't make it to the meetup uh, that JT and I are having in Thienesville that I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, and there's a link in the description for that. But she donated a ticket and it hasn't been claimed yet. So if anyone is in the chat and they want to come out to Thienesville, it's near Milwaukee. Uh, it's... It, just shoot me an email, homesteadhow at gmail.com. The first email gets it. And a huge thanks to Lori Carnivore Cheer for doing that. It was very nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so th how much are the tickets? The tickets are $25. And the reason we're charging, the last meetup we did in Montello was free, but we're actually renting out the park. So a, a, a chunk of that goes to rent out the park. And then anything less left is going to right directly towards the documentary. We're going to be there for a couple hours. It's a beautiful park, too. And then afterwards, kind of similar to the uh, Montella one, we're taking a little optional field trip to JT's. He's, there's a really cool, it's called Fox uh, Fox Town Heritage Meats Butcher Shop. Oh. Uh, so we're going there after. But it's, it's on a river, the park is, and there's stuff for kids. Kids are free. Uh, we're charging $25 for adults. And, yeah, so it's a free $25 ticket up for grabs if anyone can make it. And, again, that's in Thienesville, Wisconsin, on April 13th. It's a Saturday. It's just outside of Milwaukee. JT, his whole family is going to be there. Myself, my whole family. We're going to have the YouTube cameras. We're going to be capturing people's carnivore stories. We're going to be cooking meat. Uh, we're going to have the big Healing Humanity banner to get pictures taken. So it should be a lot of fun. All right. Yeah, I wish I could go to that. It's kind of bumming me out. But uh, I'll definitely uh, catch the next one. Yeah. And if anybody's in the Indianapolis area, um, within a couple hour drive or however far you're willing to come, uh, I'm having a meetup at um, Wolfie's on Geist Reservoir. Uh, it's a nice restaurant right on the lake. And they've got a big outdoor patio that overlooks the water. Uh, we're going to get there right when it opens at 11 o'clock on April 27th. It's free. And... Uh, uh, we'll either get our choice if, if we have good weather, we'll get out there on the patio and absorb the vitamin D. Or, you know, if it's raining and we get bad weather, uh, they'll make room for us inside. So I've already talked to the, the manager there and we're ready to go. Uh, he'll be happy to have as many carnivores there as want to show up. So that's awesome. So really looking, looking forward to that. So just wanted to go through some of the Comments before we kind of wrap up here. Yeah. Uh, carnivores don't get nasty stomach viruses. I worked at a preschool and daycare, and the kids of adults have all gotten it, but not me. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, another thing, real quick the aches and pains and ailments. Every time we have family over for birthday parties or whatever holidays this year, I've totally noticed it from everyone on the standard American diet. They're all like, Oh, my back's hurting. I got this shoulder pain, elbow pain. And it's just, I'm like, yeah, you're you're eating highly inflammatory food and you're getting inflamed. That's just what's happening. It's pretty simple. New Zealand. Greetings from oh, the future. Nice. <laughs> Still kind of blows my mind how they're like 22 hours ahead of us. Yeah. I, have you ever <laughs> been in that neck of the woods, Brent? No, I never have. If I could I've go anywhere. North America. Yeah. I would love to hit New Zealand at some point. We got to get a bunch of carnivores out there to do a, get some filming going on out there. That's just, uh, I used to know some folks that worked out there. Such a beautiful place. Need to switch on accept gift. Not sure how to do that. Yeah. I'm I know sure. Once I get to uh, um, 3,000 watch hours, um, I can start taking super chats and things like that. Right. But really, until then, I'm, the way I'm kind of running my channel is I'm I'm not trying to, you know, fund anything or, you know, 
raise money. I mean, if somebody sent me money that they wanted to raise for the movie, I would just send it to Gary. But, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, I just I'd like, you know, for this next year for my channel to grow, to monetize and at least just monetize enough to maybe pay for StreamYard, pay for, you know, the editing software and things like that, just to so I can continue providing content, making videos and putting it out there. I don't mind paying for it myself. You know, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't have even started this if I had an issue with paying for things myself. But um, but uh, yeah, it'd be nice to get to that point, you know, where it just kind of, you know, kind of takes care of itself. Right. All right. Let's do these comments here. Oh, there's a, a new member who got a Gone Mad membership. Thank you again so much. Gone Mad has legitimately gone mad. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Been donating a bunch of memberships, and it's it's awesome. And Matthew, uh, we've seen him in uh, in lots of chats before. And uh, welcome, Rick. He's been commenting in and out. It was good to have you on here, buddy. Appreciate that. Nurse Kim, you definitely shower. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, somebody keeps texting me. I think it's Todd. <laughs> hey, um, Looks like there's a couple more. He just said there's a couple more super chats. So Cranky Carnivore Cutler uh, is a new member. He just did a new member. And Chris, let me see if I can find it. it do you have, Brett, do you have like a, a starred section for your comments? There's like live and starred. Yeah. Oh, if there you, they are. Yeah, it, it'll put them in there. Makes it a little easier. I, I wish it would do that with the questions. I don't know why it doesn't do that with the questions. That'd be nice, but. I don't know if I want to show this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. That's what, he was, that's what he was texting you about. <laughs> yeah. He's like, look at my chat. Look at my super chat. Awesome. And Chris, thank you. Hello, who's your carnivore living in Lafayette? Um, yeah, Lafayette's only about an hour from here. So uh, definitely, if you want to come to the meetup, uh, just email me at who's your carnivore at gmail.com. Let me know you're coming, and uh, I'll add you to the list. Um, we got a couple other people who are coming. Um, John uh, Carnivore Backwoods, he's going to come up from uh, Tennessee uh, to be here. And last time I talked to him, um, John, the champion within, he's going to come. Uh, but I know he just had uh, on his channel, if you go to the champion within, he just had a stroke. He had said like some heart problems and now he's, uh, he's kind of out of work and he's, he's back home, I think in Georgia. So, uh, um, don't feel like you have to come buddy. Uh, just, uh, you know, heal up and take care of things. Yeah. Uh, so go check out his channel. He, he's a great guy. And then here's our new member. Cranky Carnivore Cutler became a YouTube member. Awesome. Thank yep. you so much. And I, I recognize him. He's been on a lot of the chats, too. All right. Just going to go through here. Ah, there's Susan. She lives over in Ohio. Allergies are better and hardly take any over-the-counter medicine. That's good. Um, so... I mean, if you're carnivore and your allergies are better, you know, it's helping. And that's uh, that's good to hear. Here's another allergy. Haven't needed any allergies since going carnivore. Used to take medicine daily. Mm. Wow. That's uh, Christy from Eating Wellness. She's got a great channel, too. Yeah. Super, super nice lady. She's in most of the, uh, the Lioness uh, live chats on uh Nourishment Redacted's channel. She does uh, interviews too. I've been on her channel. Um, she has great cooking videos and uh, she's got a great video on how to make your own bone broth. Mm. 
and I've used that that recipe and it it worked like a charm. It basically made bone broth jelly. It was so rich. And, oh nice. And all the and all the good stuff. All right. Well, we'll just uh, kind of wrap things up here. Um, oh, I did have one more question. Yeah. Um, maybe, you know, something to, to look forward to in the next year. I know we've all learned so much since we've started our carnivore journeys. We've watched videos. We've learned, you know, I've learned, got a really good appreciation for what fasting does and how our metabolism works, how our liver functions. Um, is there something about the human body or diet or nutrition that you don't know as much as you would like to know and have always wanted to learn more about? Oh, um, let me think about that. That's a tough one. You don't know what you don't know. I um, Right. For me, I think, it's nutrition. Yeah. Yeah. For for me, I guess one thing it would be is um, supplements. I know I mentioned earlier I'm I'm taking nothing, but my, my good friend Jeff De Prosperous, uh, we have another good friend who's my good friend too, Dwight. He is an expert on all of these things, and he's got some really good arguments that a lot of. Um, Vitamins and minerals and things like that that used to be present in everyday activities are just depleted because their soil's depleted and, and for yeah. other reasons and things like that. So he's got some good arguments for some things that he, that people may be deficient on. And I am a rookie when it comes to that stuff. Like I said, I kind of don't worry about it because I've been feeling great, but I don't know if that'll mm -hmm. change. I know some long-term carnivores like Michaela Peterson, I think even Dante Ferrigno um, had some deficiencies. I think Dante had some in iodine. Uh, Michaela mm -hmm. had one too. I remember like a year after she was like, Whoa, I never even saw this one coming sort of thing. So that's something I want to learn about more, uh, for sure. One of the biggest things I did learn about on the opposite end though, is like initially this whole documentary was going to be about carnivore diet. And the biggest thing I learned is this is so much simpler. I overcomplicated things so much for so long and it's just doing what is proper and natural for humans, returning to what is natural everything is so much better. It's really that simple. Yep. We've just gone so far away from what is natural. So, yeah, I'd like to, to learn a little bit more about nutrition and I've even looked into taking classes to become a health coach. Oh, nice. So be like a carnivore health coach. That'd be awesome. If that's even, even a thing, I think right? it is a thing, but, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking into it. Yeah. It's, uh, something something to think about so all right well we're uh, just over an hour carrie i appreciate your time and your generosity uh of doing all the things you do all the time you spend uh to help the carnivore community if you're making a freaking movie um uh, you know and you a year ago you'd never even a dream to doing such a thing um and now Look at all this that you've put on your own plate. You've heaped onto your own shoulders. So, um, and, and, and you're just getting it, man. You, I, I can't thank you enough for what, for what you're doing out there. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate those nice words and uh, no pressure, right? <laughs> no pressure. Right. No, you, know, you know, and it's okay. I mean, if it takes you another two years to make the movie and it's successful, it's worth every minute you spend on it. Right. Yep. Well, absolutely. I wouldn't feel pressured for one minute about people asking when it's going to come out. How much longer is it going to be? You know, I'm sure, you know, George Lucas, after he made Star Wars, he had people barking down his throat for five years about his next movie and then the next one, you know, so. Right. Uh, yeah. We want to, we're like, we get one shot at this, so we want to do the best job possible. So yeah, that's right. it's going to take some time. Job's worth doing. It's worth doing well. So, uh, but yeah, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Brett, for all your support. I really appreciate it. It meant the world to me. You came all the way out to the Chicago meetup. Then you came all the way out to Montello. It was so nice just becoming friends with you and meeting you. Yeah. And you cooked some 
amazing stakes as well under pressure which is great so uh, thank you so much for everything you're doing as well i really appreciate it and one last thing anyone that's watching if you just jumped on here go check out brett's channel subscribe we got to get him to a thousand subscribers it'd be awesome yeah thank you thank you so much for that and it was my pleasure to cook for you um even though you know i was not on my home turf and uh, you get handed some steaks and you know i was more than happy to to do it and cook for everybody and just the opportunity, you know, it was worth every minute in the car going back and forth to spend time with you and Adam and JT and your daughters and, and Alia, you know, she came into town and she hit me up about a, a few days before the meetup and said, Hey, can you come pick me up? I'm like, hell yeah, I'll come pick you up and uh, drive you up to Montello. So I had a re really nice conversations with her to and from, Got a couple hours in the car with her, and she's just the sweetest person ever. Yeah. And Alia Wells, she's got a great carnivore channel, too. Uh, so check out her channel. And uh, if uh, you're not subscribed to Homestead Howe, definitely uh, like and subscribe on his channel. And check out, check out his daughter's channels, too. Uh, Emma the Carnivore and Katie Outdoors. Outdoor Katie, yeah. Outdoor Katie, yeah. Yeah. They just had ACTs, but they, they said they got some big videos coming up. They've been doing some really interesting research on nutrition stuff, glyphosate and what's in Cheerios yep. and some pretty cool stuff. So, yeah, they got some videos coming up soon. Yeah, and you've got a, a wonderful family. I've met all four of his daughters, and uh, they're all exactly as cool and nice and and friendly as you could ever as you could ever hope. You raised four very wonderful young women. So. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. It helps that they're carnivores now too. So <laughs> it does gives help. them a little edge, right? I'm still working on my daughter, but uh, she's right. at least heard the message. Yep. She, baby, she baby steps. Yep. So, all right, well, we'll wrap this up. Uh, thank you again for everybody who came to the premiere of the Meat Locker Live. Does everybody like the Meat Locker? I think this is cool. This is kind of going to be my shtick. So, it, hey, honestly, it. just real quick, it was a lot of fun. It's so, it was really a lot of fun. I'll be watching. It's fun to switch things up and have some segments like that. Yeah. I enjoyed and that's kind of what I want my, my uh, lives to be. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of serious carnivore content out there. There's a lot of really deep dive. You get three knuckles deep into the medical side of it, um, the disease side of it. Um, people's people's stories, uh, which is all worth watching. But I wanted to put something out here that was fun. It was relaxing. Um, and we could just kind of openly discuss whatever, kind of whatever we want. So yep. that's kind of what I wanted, what I wanted to be. So good stuff. All right. Well, thanks again. Thanks for everybody who has subscribed to my channel. Uh, please go on, like, subscribe, watch the videos, and we'll catch you on the next Meat Locker Live. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye, everybody.